What's up? Are you in debt? Do you have a crappy credit score? Do you want to repair your credit and get out of debt? If you have horrible credit or maybe you don't have any credit, this video might be for you. Backlash written on me, card robbing on a glass bowl, I've been balling. Free my ladies in the counter now, I'm already out. Already on the countdown, I'ma set it right. What's up, my name is Keith Kelfus. I've wanted to make this video for a long time and I've been intimidated to make this video because it could literally be an hour long video. And so I'm just gonna go, go general right here and kinda open up the rabbit hole. If you have debt collectors calling you and you're scared and you don't even make enough money to pay off your debts or maybe you don't know where to get started or should you let it just ride out or should you pay it off? First of all, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I'm just a guy giving my opinion, but I've learned a lot. Six years ago, I was in debt considering facing bankruptcy. I had bad stuff on my credit, horrible credit score. I was scared, had debt collectors calling me, and I didn't know what to do. And then over the over the past you know five years, I've made friends with people who are have very good credit scores who own finance companies who are just all over that industry and I've learned so much stuff it's I can't even share it all in one video but it's tremendously helped me and I want to share it with you at least some of it very quickly so the most important thing in my opinion if you want to get out of debt repair your credit score is to first change the way you see debt change the way that you see it and view it if you're viewing it in fear or viewing it from the standpoint of a victim, I don't think you're ever going to win. We can look at contracts. You can look at maritime admiralty law, corporations, your social security number, straw man theories. You can look at is the debt really even yours? Is it an alleged debt? Is it a real debt? What you should and should not say to a debt collector. How you literally can just wash a debt totally clean like it was never even there. The statute of limitations, whether it's three years, five years, seven years, even ten years, depending on your state, was the debt bought and sold to somebody else? And then they're trying to get you to agree that the debt was even yours. So that, And then if you even make a payment on a debt that's six years and nine months up from, you know, having to legally fall off your credit report or be removed or the debt has been deemed uncollectible and sold off to somebody else for pennies on the dollar, could you, if you even admit that it's your debt, it could reset the statute, statute of limitations and now it becomes your debt, a debt that's not even actually even yours for another seven years. If you make a payment on a debt, it could actually hurt your credit more and then reset for seven more years. Uh, there's so much stuff, it's it's insane, uh, but it's, it's simple once you go through uh, creditkarma.com. I know I'm just spitting out a bunch of stuff at you, just trust me here. Creditkarma.com is an awesome app and I'm sure it's not completely totally accurate I know I've got my credit score from a 528 which is really bad up to a 744 now um, if you're late on any payments such as uh, I show that I have poor on time payment history here's just an example I have poor on time I'm a criminal I have poor on time payment history I do I've never been late on a single payment. No, 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 let's say you. You could not have been late on a single payment for the past five years ago. Five years. But five years ago, you were late on one student loan payment one time. And you were, a, you were two weeks late. And now that sticks on your credit report for seven years, showing that you have poor on-time payment history. You could literally be like Jesus walking around and you if you have one little speck of dust on your garment up oh, you're a piece of crap up oh, you're a criminal up oh, you can't make it to the gates of heaven up oh, like 
it, and that's how it, it can feel very, very discouraging. So seven years is a long time, but it's going to come whether you like it or not. So I really think that you have to make enough money to even be able to... Sorry, we're doing this seven day challenge right now. We're getting up early and going and running. I'm tired. Um, you have to make enough money to be able to pay all your bills and then pay all your taxes, you know, and then save money and have money for emergency and then pay off your debts. So the only way for me to start paying off my debts was first of all, I had to actually suspend my dis my belief in knowing that the debts were there. I know this sounds like really crappy advice. So I'll just say I had to pretend that the debt didn't exist and ignore the debt collectors for a while and say I'm not in any debt because it was so emotionally distracting and so much guilt was running through me. I couldn't even make any more money. I couldn't even focus on making money because I was like, I made a little bit of money. Oh my God, should I invest it in my business to make more money or should I pay these debt collectors? I don't know what to do. Should we maybe get the hell out of this shithole we're living in and upgrade our lifestyle a little bit more or pay off the debt collectors? So here's what I had to do. I had to get my business up to a point where it was fully sustainable in paying all the bills because, okay, if you got just enough money to make it to the end of the month and you got a little bit more money this month, are you going to give it to the debt collector or are you going to sock that away to protect yourself? Right? So I had to get my business to where it was sustainably feeding my family and saving up for the winter like a squirrel. And then when the excess money started coming in, and I was learning more by reading books like this and audiobooks and 30 way, 33 Ways to Improve Your Credit Score, Debt Cures by Kevin Trudeau and all that stuff, then you start learning how you can negotiate. Then you start, when you get some money in the bank, you could start getting some power and confidence. You start learning how to talk to these people on the phone. You start learning about the three debt collection bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You learn that you can dispute debts. You learn that you can just get things resolved or wipe off. You can owe a debt that's a thousand bucks and settle it for 300 bucks. You got an old cell phone bill, like an old Sprint phone that got shut off. Raise your hand if you got a Sprint phone that got shut off back in the day and you think you owe them like 800 bucks. You can literally settle that thing for 160 bucks and then ask for ask them for a, a proof of payment letter and then upload that thing inside of the uh, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, the three debt reporting companies that they have to report to every single month by law and then you can upload it to them and then really push to make sure that thing gets wiped off. Like you get on top of it and then you get on creditkarma.com and you start checking out your credit score every single month and seeing what's going on, getting in there and seeing like, oh, what, what actually am I in debt? Start getting the papers in the mail and start organizing and start getting on top of it. And little by little, you can start to chip away at the debt pile. You can go get yourself a secured credit card at your bank. I put like $250 down and got like a secured credit card with a $250 limit of my own money. And I had to use that thing for a long time. And then now the thing's got like, I don't know, a $5,000 limit. And then once you kind of get that going, you get another credit card, right? And then you, you pay it off every single month and you can learn about credit card algorithms and how to never ever use more than 30% of your allotted, like your allowed credit amount. So if you are allowed to spend 10,000, I mean a thousand, Never ever spend more than 333 bucks on that thing and pay it off every month and let it go past the point so it shows and then pay it off. If you do that consistently, then you start to build a credit, right? And there's some things that can hurt you, like if you open up too many too fast, there's so much stuff like you're, it's, it's a long, long, long journey, but you get to the point where you're so proactive and you're so on top of it that you're like, it's like playing duck hunt. A duck, a pow, a duck comes up, pow, you hit it immediately and you get really confident and proactive, right? Um, I remember over the winter, our 
gas bill in our house. It just comes out automatically. Well, we had changed debit cards, right? It expired. We got a new debit card. And I didn't realize our gas bill didn't get paid for three and a half, four months. And it was racking up like three, four hundred bucks or something. And I called up the gas company, freaked out. I go, oh, you didn't report that to my credit. Like, no, I, I paid it off right then and there. And I put it back on auto pay with a new credit card. It's just something that slipped, right? Really, really busy. Um, and they didn't report it to the credit bureaus. And I was like, oh, can't mess up a clean record so that you develop that state of consciousness where you get really on top of it so you go from being a complete victim to the matter to now you are in control and your credit score is awesome I have like one thing left on my credit report that's gonna fall off in a few months and then I will be 100% debt free and 80% uh, of everything else that was all on there I paid it all off like 20 G's worth, $20,000 worth. So, you know, I kind of had a option a few years ago. Should we upgrade our lifestyle and go get like a nice house and all these nice things? Or in the, in the housing market kind of went up. It, it all depends on where you're at, right? Or should I take that money and do the right thing and pay off my, uh, my debts? So I spent the last five years paying off debt and rebuilding my credit. Now I have good ass credit and I could go get finance for almost anything, right? And it took years to get to that point. And I don't know if I'm proud of it or not, but like, damn it, I'm 35. So I think that the, the way to look at it is get this book on audible.com. It'll blow your mind. Kevin Trudeau's debt cures. They don't want you to know about whether what you think of him or not. If you kind of do some research on this guy, <laughs> he got himself into some trouble. But I learned a lot of stuff from this guy. You know, maybe he was saying some stuff that they don't want you to know about. You know, I can't say that for sure. I don't know. All I know is that, you know, wherever there's information that you can get to learn how to financially uh, protect yourself. Uh, but once you get going, a really good way, I think, is to learn how to manage your money. Well, if you don't make enough money, you can't manage the shit. Right? It's really, really easy for people who are making high profit margins or making a lot of money to, to manage it well. Well, it's actually, you got to learn how to manage a hundred bucks before you can learn how to manage a thousand, ten thousand, or a hundred thousand, right? If you can't manage a hundred bucks, well, what do you mean? I got, you know, when you first getting started out and you're broke, you, you're like, I have all these bills to pay and I have this much money. Somebody's getting screwed this month. Well, the reality of the situation is you can buck the system all you want. You have to, f you have to figure out a way to make more money at all costs, <laughs> at all costs, <laughs> at all costs. And you're like, well, I can't not pay this and I can't sacrifice my family and I can't do this. And it, like, nobody cares. The world doesn't care. Money doesn't care. The credit bureaus, they don't give a shit. It's all on you to figure out how to do it all. And I think if you cut yourself some slack and you realize that, you know, first of all, you got to tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. And you just start chipping away at the old block. It'll seem like a mountain, but I'll tell you one thing. You underestimate, um, you overestimate what you can do in a year, and you us underestimate what you can do in five years. I think Tony Robbins said that. So if, if you can get a lot of things accomplished in five years, and five years, seven years is going to come whether you like it or not. I remember back when I was 28 and I lost everything. I was terrified. And I told stories like this in other videos. I was like, oh, my God, I'm not even going to have my shit together until I'm like 32, 33, 34, 35. That's like saying right now, I'm not going to have my shit together until I'm 45. If you're in that tough of a situation and you have no way out, uh, Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that you were at when you created the problem. And I know the world can be really tough. You can have strokes of bad luck where no matter what you do, everything falls apart. There's dark seasons in your life where no matter what you do, you're just getting hammered. You could be the best hardworking, smartest, talented, most strategic person, and everything you touch turns to shit for a season of your life. And you just have to deal with it and just keep chugging along. And that's where faith comes in. So, But I tell you one thing, there will be a time in your life when it's your time to shine and the sun is shining on you and your life and your and everything you touch turns to gold. You literally can't help it. 
everything you touch works out. It f comes to fruition, it turns to gold, and those are the years you step on the gas and make it all happen and, and keep a healthy mindset. Uh, there's a book called Think and Grow Rich, and I really aspire to this. I really can see this clearly. Those who put definite purpose and definiteness of intention into definite plans of action, right? and then work those plans out and execute on them will more times than not or the people that don't they will harvest results because that's the way the universe works nothing just happens until uh, you apply pressure on it like um, if I throw a big party and a bunch of food what if nobody shows up and I lose out you know what if I try to build this business or do this thing well the truth of the matter is if you don't build it no one's gonna see it if you want to start a, let's say, a lawn care business, right? If you don't put flyers and signs all over the place and call everybody and put ads out and do everything you possibly can, nobody's going to call your ass anyways to come cut their lawn. But if you do do all that, it increases the chances because here's the funny thing. When you believe in something and you create it and you put it all over the place, it literally happens by the law of nature. You make it happen. It's not like, what if it doesn't work? It's going to work. I think if you pay attention to your credit and you make a decision right now, make the decision right now, you know what? This I'm in a hole right now. I don't know how I'm going to get out, but I'm getting out. I'm going to turn this thing around. I want to be able to go to a car lot one day and just sign and drive. I want to be able to get approved for a house. I want to be able to have you know, credit, right? So I think first of all, it's the decision, even if you don't know how you're gonna do it and it seems overwhelming, if you, what you track and measure expands. It's a law, it's physics, so, right? So the definition of success is actively pursuing a worthwhile goal. If you are in hot pursuit of a worthwhile goal, damn it, you're successful. So where did you come from? Where are you going? Because it doesn't matter where you came from if you know where you're going. You look at people like Oprah Winfrey, like you listen to her life story, the things that happened to her when she was a little girl and how where she came from and the things that happened to her mother and like what she grew out of and who she became and some of the most successful people, the rose that grew from concrete, the people that came from nothing, sometimes are the most successful. My buddy Eric Reno, the roofing guy, you know who he is. Dude, this, this dude was... <laughs> he... He didn't come. From, he came from very humble beginnings, so to speak. If you'd have seen him, like I was on the phone with somebody the other day, and I said, "Yeah, Eric turned out demonstrably successful," and he's like, "Eric Reno? I never would have thought in a million years that guy would have." If you'd have seen him, I mean, that that motherfucker was tripping, <laughs> and he did, because it comes down to a decision of believing in yourself. So. 33 ways to improve your credit score debt cures they don't want you to know about anything dude man we got we're in the future bro you got a cell phone you got audible.com if you're listening to music all day long while you're working i mean cut out a couple hours a day of that i'm not trying to tell you what to do i'm just trying to impress upon you that through the power of audiobooks you can literally learn how to build a business increase your credit score all like robert kiyosaki's books you can learn about marketing you can literally be on a different planet while you're stuck in this dead end job or you're stuck wherever you're stuck at you can feed your mind and then when you feed your consciousness and you change and you get enthusiastic you literally start through the laws of quantum physics or whatever you start changing your reality when you get fired up and you start making those confident decisions you'll just start attracting those people new people and the old people will start to fall away so yay yay all right cool this is my bookshelf i need to clean up these are my books dog i'm writing my third book right now this is my first book uh how to start a landscaping business right now in a startup money. You can get it up on audible.com, paperback book on. Just type in Keith Kelfis, Amazon author. Here's my other book, How to Make $500 a Day Cleaning Windows on paperback. And it's also an audiobook too on audible.com. And then over here is my books. I actually need to clean out this bookshelf and organize it. Here, one second. This is off kilter. There you go. See? 
I <laughs> love books, man. But if you don't have time to read, just go on audible.com. Tons of amazing books, dude. All right. Um, I wish you a blessed, a blessed day. Hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, and let me know what you thought about this video. I'll put a link in the description below for a couple of my favorite books. Cool. All right, later. Peace out.